Victorian jewelry to me is just like a wealth of societal nuances that went into these little pieces of history that you can wear. So let's dive into the black jewelry of the Victorian air. Cause it's a bitter, bitter pill that I need to swallow. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, thank you for joining me. And if you're coming back and tuning in again, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this it. This the first video in a short series about the black materials used in Victorian period jewelry. These videos are to help you identify and date the different types of black material that was used during this time. Maybe the information given in these videos will help you do that. And for anybody who likes to binge watch, at the end of this series, I'm going to compile all of the videos and put a little extra tidbits in there. And there'll be one long video that you can sit and just watch all the way through if that's what you prefer. Vulcanite, also known as ebonite, is like a hard rubber material. And it was created through the vulcanization process. And this is where a natural rubber was treated with sulfur and heated. And it's not like we really need to know that, but it's kind of interesting. But this process was discovered by Charles Goodyear. That's right, I'm sure you guys have heard of this guy. And that was in 1839. And he really revolutionized the use of rubber by making this stuff more durable and stable through this process. But since we're talking about jewelry, during the Victorian period, this would have been important for some different reasons. And that's because it had this really deep, rich black color. And not only did it have this great color, it could be molded and then it could be carved. So this made it an affordable material compared to things like jet and onyx or glass that was so hard to carve and get those intricate designs. Now it made this whole world of black jewelry accessible to a wider audience of people. And the jewelry that was made out of vulcanite, I mean, it was anything and everything. Uh, brooches, lockets, bracelets, earrings, crosses, cameos, floral designs. You could have the weeping willows. It could be for fashion. It could be for the mourning process. It could be for any of that. And it was used for everything. Now, vulcanization was created in 1839, but that doesn't mean that it was instantly being put to use in jewelry. It was probably more around the mid 1840s and it was really used a lot more after the 1860s when Prince Albert died. So a lot of the vulcanite jewelry was actually used more during the 1860s and 70s and you know probably up until around like right around the turn of the century. So at least we know that the dates aren't going to go before the 1840s, um, but it can definitely come after that. And around the turn of the century, it really wasn't used anymore because there was a lot of other materials coming out that was more durable and they didn't need vulcanite anymore. Now, when we're going to identify vulcanite today, it's going to be a little bit different than when it was made 100 to 200 years ago. But when it was made, it could range from a really deep black to a really dark brown. And over time, vulcanite, it, it fades to a, like a brownish hue, and it can even develop kind of like a greenish patina. So it, it really does, like, it doesn't age extremely well um, when it's exposed to light and air a whole lot. And vulcanite is typically opaque. It's not going to have any translucence to it. So if you put it up to a light or hold a flashlight or something behind it, you're not going to be able to see through it. So if you can see through it, you might need to look into some of the other materials. So vulcanite can either be polished or matte. It was usually made with a matte finish on it. 
So we would see that more in the jewelry we find now. However, it was polished and the more you wear it, the more it actually becomes polished. So it's kind of like it polishes itself. And we see that a lot more on the raised surfaces of the piece instead of the ones in recess. Vulcanite is an organic material made with the sulfur and rubber, so it's going to warm up very quickly. It's not going to take as long as like glass or metal to warm up. So when you hold it, it's already going to feel warm at room temperature. Now, as to weight, this is relatively lightweight. Due to its chemical structure, it's a lot less dense than things like stone or glass. The smell test would be it smelling a little bit like rubber or kind of sulfuric. So if you're rubbing it and putting heat to it to make it generate heat, it's going to have one of those slight smells to it. You can always do one of those like heated needle tests as well, like in one of those inconspicuous areas, and it'll pretty much just sink right into the vulcanite with hardly any resistance and it's going to smell like really rubbery kind of like a burnt tire smell if you've ever smelled somebody like spinning out with their tires or something that's kind of what it's going to smell like although i've never liked these hot needle tests not on bakelite not on vulcanite not on any of these so i don't recommend that but if you're just dying to know this is one way to tell Another potential way to identify the vulcanite is it could present with a light greenish or yellowish glow under a UV or black light because sulfur has a fluorescence to it. Very slight, but over the years as it ages, some of those chemical compounds that's used during the vulcanization process can actually cause a fluorescence. So if your jewelry glows some under a black light, that might be an indication that it is vulcanite. One other thing that you can do is a scratch test. Now, I do not suggest this because it's not like scratching a piece of gold that you can buff right out. This is a rubber material that when you scratch it, a lot of it comes off. However, if it's something that you really want to do, the way to do it is to lightly rub it on uh, unfinished porcelain or if you have white scratch stones. I'm going to show you the visual here. Also, the reason I don't suggest this is because Jet does about the same coloring, so you can't really tell the difference between the two with just the scratch test. Vulcanite is molded into intricate designs most of the time as well, so you can check for those fine details and characteristics that are molded and not actually carved into it. So in the construction of these pieces, you have to think of how they were made. Now, vulcanite would have been put in molds. So when they're taken out of the molds, they could have seams on there. There's some things that just don't have that, like natural materials would not have a seam. However, vulcanite, it's possible for it to have a seam. But also, they were hand finished. It's more likely they do not have that. And over time, that those seams probably got rubbed down quite a bit. So most of the time when we do see a piece of vulcanite, even though it was molded, it usually doesn't have those seam marks. This is not a material from an animal, so it's not gonna have those growth lines, those striations that we see in things like tortoise shell or wood. So if you see those little growth lines or something like that in there, that's not going to be vulcanite. So that's one way to tell that it's not vulcanite. And also, you can always compare it if you have something to compare it to. So if you have some pieces and you know what they are, go ahead and, you know, just do some comparisons with it. Just remember that all these characteristics should be considered alongside with all the other factors such as the color and the weight and hopefully you're using some of the non-destructive tests 
and uh, you can come up with a really accurate identification. And it takes time to learn these processes. So don't just think, oh, I'll never get it. It's okay. Get familiar with them and hopefully you can find a lot of great pieces out there and this helps. So this is the end of part one of black materials from the Victorian period. And I hope you got a lot out of it. Thank you for watching and tune in for the next one where we'll be discussing more of the black materials. You're glowing in the dark. You're glowing in the dark. Glowing in the dark. I feel it in my heart. You're glowing in the dark. Glowing in the dark.